Welcome everybody, thanks for tuning in. My name is Ben, I'm the community lead at Ethernex. Um, we are lucky to have Matthew, uh, the CEO of Axpire, joining us today um, for a quick uh, conversation. Thanks for stopping by, Matthew. Yeah, of course, of course. So happy to get into a little bit more about who we are, what we're up to, and really where we all came together, if that works. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, perhaps we can start from, from the top then, sort of how did you guys come to be? What problems are you solving and uh, where your roadmap is taking you? Yeah, absolutely. So it's actually a father-son team. I've worked with my dad for about 15 years. I, I came out of uh, college and did five years in finance, so investment banking and in private equity. And then I also uh, had a little stint in the summers with, with his company. But I've actually worked with him when he started his first company back in the UK from a kitchen table all the way through to an office above a garage to multiple offices nice. and then an international company. So that was really around fintech invoicing and payments. And so a lot of what we were doing there was really just taking the human manual processes out of a lot of enterprise problems. So invoicing was a big one, uh, billing was a big one, payments were a big one. A lot of these things were done with email and PDF and it took a lot of time and manpower. So for example, if you look at Citigroup, their mid and back office, we tended to target FinTech because they tend to be quite large companies. So that was the demographic. They have a back office that could fill, uh, if three of their back offices could fill the Wembley Stadium, which you'll appreciate as a Brit and that's 80,000 people. Yeah. Uh, so we found actually that the most revolutionary technology there um, was a tool that would automate what people were doing for invoicing, for payments, and for fintech problems like enterprise resource planning. So spend management is a good example there. And we grew that business to a multi-million dollar company. As I said, I did banking for a few years after college just to get some real world experience, but came back into the business as it was still growing. And we came into the realization that there was an opportunity to use a new technology. We already had machine learning built in. So we had an element of AI just to kind of speed up the approval of invoices and, and payments. So basically starting to take people out of the equation there. But we also found that there was a new technology we heard of called blockchain that would essentially allow A, data immutability and auditability, which was big for these companies in the fintech space where regulation is so intense, especially now. So that's what I found coming out of uh, finance or financial services myself. A lot of what I was seeing on the day to day was people had to interact with auditors and regulators to provide them accurate data. So blockchain provided a massive value proposition there. And another big one that we saw was, you know, payments or remittances or invoicing where if you were using a form of cryptocurrency, you could essentially take the fees and time required to do things like that down to, you know, minutes, depending on which blockchain you're using and fees, same kind of thing, depending on which blockchain you're using, but typically very, very cheap. Like you look on, uh, on things like Ripple and see that they can send hundreds of millions of dollars for less than $1, which is in fees, which is fantastic. So that kind of process is what just made us decide to spin out a new company after having worked with great customers in uh, our old company, LSG, this company that's still running as a sister company. And yeah. uh, Axby was really focused out of a desire to, to cater to alternative investment managers, which we saw as one of the highest growth and highest need areas of, of fintech. So hedge funds, private equity funds, they really didn't have any support um, on the mid and back office the same way these banks did, but we already had the tools built from LSG. We basically just incorporated blockchain as, a, as an additional value add to, to what we were bringing to this new, new company, Axe So. On the blockchain side of things, it, it caters to clients as a database. It's starting to cater to clients as a, a payments tool. Um, and it's also starting to cater to clients in that it can use things like smart contracts to automatically divvy up invoices for these hedge funds and private equity funds between 30 of their different internal funds. So it's things like that, which you could provide to a, a regulator, which uh, these companies have to do all the time, that would really take a lot of people out of the equation. So for example, the last client we had, we took... Uh, we took four uh, of the 10 out of the equation in their back office. That's a 40% ROI or, or just using it for about a year, which is a good return on their investment. And we're starting to kind of add modules to that tool. So it really, for Axpire, just started off as, a, as an invoicing and payments tool. Uh, we're adding modules like procurement, uh, which we also offer to our community as a, as a freelancing tool. We're adding modules like payment, which we're really excited about. So we have a tool in the works, which will be essentially a plugin that can flip in real time crypto to fiat. And that is something they could do within a second, depending on uh, the exchange that you work with. But uh, essentially that enables people to kind of abstract away the, 
the blockchain side of things and get all the benefits of the blockchain side of things. So our, our big kind of strap line is adoptable blockchain infrastructure, which we're trying to do across all our products. So that's Axbar in a nutshell, yeah. but happy to talk more about, I think, how we could work with these Spinax. Cool. That sounds good. It's, a, it's an interesting story. Um, just a quick one on the team then. So have you brought a lot of people over from LSG or how big is the expire team at the moment? And kind of, I, I assume your background is in B2B kind of um, businesses that you, as you just described. Um, maybe you can talk a bit about the team. Yeah, absolutely. So as I said, it's, it's father, son, I worked with my uh, dad who's come over from LSG to expire. He's an uh, industry vet in the B2B side of things, built a, a successful SaaS company before that. He was in consulting, uh, tech consulting as well. Uh, we have a blockchain development lead who's been in software development. Uh, he's actually relatively new uh, for us, but uh, we've known of him for a long time. We just never had a chance to work internally with him. We worked uh, as, a, as an outside uh, relationship with with our friend Gustavo, who's our, our lead blockchain developer, but 20 plus years. So knew him from LSG days, knew him um, when we were looking for freelance work, also when we were looking for um, things done specifically for automation. So that's why he's been such a great fit as a blockchain developer. He also has a number of years explicitly on blockchain versus just automation. So that's that's the tech lead on the blockchain side. On the enterprise side, we have uh, we, we, we nicked the tech lead from LSG. The LSG team is nice. still uh, self-sufficient. <laughs> yeah, thank yeah. you. Uh, still self-sufficient. And there are a lot of people there who, who I've, I've worked with in the past and are still going strong. But Axbuyer has kind of a hybrid of LSG people and people we've worked with from um, the LSG days that we've we've known are, are strong in their particular field. So um, I work with a guy as a CFO who was from Deloitte and we knew him from the LSG days and now uh, we're all 100% on x -Bias. So a lot of these guys who've come together from prior experiences and uh, it's basically just removing the risk of the equation that uh, in the blockchain space, it tends to be the case that uh, you never know what you're going to get with uh, with talent so it's it's reduced a lot of the risk in in hiring that way so a lot of them yeah. are b2b correct and uh a lot of them we've worked with in the past but uh, all solid on their respective fields from deloitte in finance to uh this 30 year software vet on, on the on the development and blockchain side and uh yeah consulting and tech uh on the ceo and, and coo side and then i i suppose i also have a, a finance background so i was in, in morgan stanley for uh, about okay. three years as well, which uh, involved a little bit of operating, but uh, I really got my operating experience more on the private equity side of a $15 billion fund out in San Francisco. Nice. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Perhaps like before we talk about the Axe token, it might be worth quickly touching on the roadmap. Um, if there's any exciting partnerships or releases or launches happening um, or have just happened. Yeah, absolutely. So. This isn't actually something we've even announced, but uh, why not? We had we had something come out uh, recently for the payments tool where uh, Liquid, the biggest exchange in Japan, is looking to be uh, yeah. the exclusive partner there. Uh, we also have uh, an announcement on the uh, potential business partnership side. I can't say necessarily <laughs> where, or I will say it's a top 30 coin that, that is very B2B focused that's looking for a partnership with us. Um, I can say, in, in, okay, I can say as a... Uh, partnership at least uh yeah. the chain is, is interested in working with us nice. um i can't say more than that in terms of what we're looking to do with them but sure. uh, in, in the very least you know a partnership is is uh on the way there which is great yeah. uh, so exciting stuff neither of those have been announced so uh it's an exclusive scoop but yeah. ethanx i'm already giving you guys yeah already giving you guys some exclusive stuff but uh, yeah, those that. are kind of two yeah no worries, those are kind of two big um upcoming events and then i would say on the roadmap side of things, we have a lot of modules right now, and it's kind of like season one of Breaking Bad. There's a lot of things going on, and it may not make sense uh, to an outsider to see uh, there's a spend management tool, there's a payments tool, uh, there's a procurement tool, which has a version, a uh, consumer version just for our community, which is doubling as a, as a freelancing tool. It may seem hard to see all of that in uh in conjunction with each other, but there is a lot of synergy between what we're doing with those modules to basically make an end-to-end -end, uh, ERP or enterprise resource planning system for businesses. And a lot of that can also be made available to consumers in their individual modules. So the payments tool, for example, I mentioned, and this is more to the roadmap, by the way, the payments yeah. tool I mentioned, that is something that will flip uh, crypto to fiat. And so 
we'll make a version of it available for consumers to to use on retail sites. But a big aspect of what we're doing with that with, with hedge funds and private equity funds is they can use or take advantage of, of blockchain in terms of its remittances features. So things yeah. like lower fees and faster uh, transfers of money. They could do that without even really knowing they're doing that. The only thing they have to have is this plugin, which consumers will know as, a, as an e-commerce tool. But once you see how it will fit together there, it will kind of be more like season four of Breaking Bad, where everything comes together and you understand, okay, now I can see how the payment yeah. tool has synergy with, with the invoicing tool or the spend management tool rather. And I can see how the freelancing or procurement tool also fits in as a, as a mid office tool for businesses. So there's a lot of modules being built out right now, which is yeah. why we've actually been relatively quiet the past year has really been development. And I could also see the next six months still being very development focused, but for the sake of a partnership with uh, FLX, we also want to do a lot of exciting marketing, but that's kind of uh, an exception to our traditional rule for what we've done thus far, given we're in development mode. Um, yeah. I, I love the uh, Breaking Bad analogy. Um, it sounds like it's yeah. going to end a lot better, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, uh, yeah. I'm not sure who I would want to be at the end of that, uh, <laughs> Jesse or, or Mr. White. But uh, yeah. the point being is that you will have some sense of where everything fits together. And uh, yeah. we have a roadmap for that. And it's available in your one page. And, and I'd love to share a deck with you guys to go into more detail about that as well. But essentially, the goal is to have both back, mid, and front office tools for businesses where we can have a few versions of, of those for consumers as well. Um, but where you'll see it come together really nicely is the B2B side for sure. So that's kind of why we're talking to um, yeah. the chain for, for a partnership. So. Awesome. Sounds great. Um, so moving into the role of the expire token, um, perhaps a a double barrel question. So why did you guys choose Ethereum A and sort of B? What role does the token play in the Xpire ecosystem? Yeah, so it, it has an element of both roadmap and um, what we already have in place, to be honest. So we have the token as, as a platform. So, so a big thing about having a, an ecosystem is, is having platform synergies. So we really wanted people who have the token to enjoy benefits across a number of different products so it wasn't just that you could use it on spend management but you were getting advantages from using it on um, a payments tool on a freelancing tool i could use this token to get services for my company pay for those services with this token if i have any left over i can go procure um, products for that company or if i if i'm a consumer i can have someone make me a, a logo or and once i have uh, a little bit of money left over from that or if someone pays me in money from that it's not just sitting there as a, as a token, I could actually go use that on an e-commerce site, which mm -hmm. basically our payments plugin will do and, and does in, in demo right now. And, and it's essentially to have a an ecosystem benefit from being part of our community. And that, that will mean that this token is really available to do many, many things. And, that, and that's where you can kind of enjoy the benefits of working with a, a platform like Axpire versus a, a protocol or something like that, where it's it's really just single purpose. So we wanted something where we'll have tools that have benefits of blockchain, but if you hold the token, either as a consumer or a business, you get to enjoy uh, benefits across multiple products. So for example, on the business side of things, if I'm paying invoices in um, Axpire token, that will give me the blockchain benefits of lower fees and faster remittances when I go to pay them. And our payments tool handles the, the flip that in real time. So the merchant could receive uh, fiat if they want to, crypto if they want to, things like that. So it's really just to give. Yeah. Um, so is that, is that, yeah. So is that discount then what one of the main drivers of demand for the expire token? So the discount on remittances is a big feature of it. I would say there's also things that we're looking to do on the licensing fee side of things. So if you, if you hold a certain amount, that will give you access to, to the enterprise software. That's, that's a more of a roadmap feature after businesses get comfortable with just using a blockchain database. So going back to where our, our token fits in with the roadmap as well, blockchain features as a, as a database right now to give security benefits and auditability for companies or, or alternative investment managers. Once we can get them comfortable with that, and there are live use cases of that right now, we're looking to integrate the token as, yes, it will have the, the benefits as, that I mentioned of, of other platform products like uh, procurement and uh, we're doing a, an ICO STO uh, platform called Digital Shares, which is powered by one of our other products, Coinbox. 
they can use this token if they're comfortable now with blockchain as a remittances tool that lets them get additional features that they haven't got right now with just blockchain. So that would be things like if I decide to use the XFi token as a business, A, I could use it for my licensing fee, B, I could use it on multiple products, and C, now I could use it if I'm paying these invoices in this token as a logistics tool to create an interface, which we have, to essentially allow vendors to track where their invoices are in the payment process, kind of like the same way you track products on Amazon. So yeah. it's got multiple benefits. Um, it's right now in early stages with enterprise customers. It's a lot more comfortable for consumers who are in the crypto space, and that's kind of um, the benefit that they get in terms of uh, being able to use it on, on multiple platforms. That's where their main benefit comes in. There is a burn on the fees, which is nice. So instead of having a, I, I used uh, a few tools before I got into blockchain for uh, procurement of services like uh, Fiverr and Upwork. And if you notice on those tools, the yeah. payer or the job creator pays 5% and the freelancer takes a 20% fee. So it's 25% fees, which is kind of insane. And they're kind of their adoption model was more um, referrals and things like that. Um, yeah. But what I liked about having a token for the consumer side was we could burn fees, which essentially rewards the community who's getting paid in it. So we're truly trying to follow the, the model of, uh, uh, you know, the Brave browser and things like that, whereby the people using it and the early adopters of the, of the solution are truly getting the most benefit out of it. And then why the Ethereum uh, blockchain, I suppose, is it's really right now uh, kind of protocol wars that we're sitting on the sidelines of, of waiting to see what plays out. As mentioned, uh, we are talking to some larger B2B uh, blockchain companies or projects that have competing protocols. But for the moment, when we're working with uh, large enterprises, we had to pick something that was uh, A, able to give us flexibility to add new features. So that's really why Ethereum over blockchain, we could, we could do things like smart contracts and, and have uh, automation built in versus Bitcoin, which is a little bit harder. But B, uh, and the main reason really is, is the security of Ethereum versus other um, you know, smart contract based uh, protocols is the security side of things. So we basically say to the company that if someone breaks into your, your software or your uh, IT stack, they'll have to also break the Ethereum um, network yeah. to, to basically do anything uh, malicious on, on your database. So that's the reason there. Um, the token is earlier stage in the enterprise side and the consumer side, but uh, it's really intended to benefit early adopters um, as, as yeah. much as possible and have cross-platform synergy once everything's built up. Yeah, it's really interesting. Thanks for the detailed answers. Um, no worries. You're covering, you're covering a lot of my questions in one, which is perfect. <laughs> okay, great. Awesome. Um, perhaps like a, another interesting one for viewers would be sort of how can someone get involved with Axpire now, even if you're a developer or a potential customer, what's an easy way to A, learn more and B, get involved? Yeah. Great question. So thank you for the, the free, free advertising. Um, so they can definitely either go on the website and there's contact us forms all over the place there. They can reach out to me. I am mm at agspire.com. Uh, we have a, a telegram group that's essentially 24 seven. Like we don't typically do AMAs because for the most part, we, yeah. we see the, the 24 seven group as an AMA. Like we are always there to respond to questions. A, and, a constant AMA. <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Definitely for, for them more so than us, but kidding aside, I, I, I do enjoy um, that we actually do have real relationships with a lot of people in those channels. Sure. But yeah, probably I'd probably say mainly uh, that there's phone numbers and emails on the site, but also Telegram is a, is a really good spot. Like we're always pretty active. We have about, I'd say, probably eight or nine admins who are covering nice. the all dawn to dusk across all time zones. Yeah. Okay, cool. Maybe as a final question then, um, or, or is there anything else you wanted to highlight? Yeah, so I didn't get to the biggest part, which is kind of how we could work with SNX. And uh, there's a lot of things there. Um, so SNX Trustless actually was the whole reason we got involved with this process nice. because we want to have our token on there as well. Um, a big element of these tools is having cross crypto uh, compatibility, which SNX Trustless would bring into the into the um, ecosystem, which would be massive. So on the procurement tool Matchbox, it would allow people to earn money and, and pay in different uh, cryptocurrencies, which is, is great on the um, front office tool that we have, which is also kind of an IC, like depending on what uh, reference you're coming at it from, it's, it's a marketing platform for securities or uh, 
utility tokens, but from the consumer perspective, it's more of a, an ICO SDO platform. Having SNX Trustless there would be massive. Having SNX Trustless in our payments tool would also be massive. So basically you could use NEC on any website. Um, we already have that with uh, Coinbase. So obviously it's a much smaller pool of tokens that we can work with there, but essentially we have a tool that can flip crypto uh, to fiat and back uh, within um, a second. It's, it's 200 milliseconds nice. right now with Coinbase. So we're looking to basically uh, offer that to the, the SNX Trustless uh, tool and, and have a much broader array of cryptocurrencies that you can use on any website. So really just adding utility to uh, NEC would be the goal with the integration into our products and SNX yeah. Trustless plays a role in there. We really haven't done any marketing um, because a lot of it, as I mentioned, is, is being focused on development. But to be honest, um, if it would impact getting SNX Trustless, then we'd be willing to engage relationships that we have uh, in the Premier League. We actually haven't engaged um, one of our partners there, which does marketing for uh, Premier League teams. We sponsor a team if we won the competition. Uh, Sounds good. For, for yeah. Uh, we also have influencer relationships representing about 300,000 subscribers on YouTube, everyone from Ivan on Tech to Ian Bellino to Crypto cool. Love. Uh, oh hey Maddie. Anyway, as just an example, we're putting out a video today just to show we're not uh, we're not kidding. We really haven't pulled the trigger on marketing as we're in development mode. But if yeah. we were to get something as big as this, we would. A few other things would be things like uh, additional marketing uh, in tandem with with NEC. So we'd offer NEC with the same benefits that we offer our token AXPR on all our platforms. Whether that's lower fees, whether that's loyalty benefits like uh, giveaways or exclusive content, we would do that. Um, trading competition. Airdrop if we were to uh, twenty thousand dollar trading competition, twenty thousand dollar airdrop if we were to get listed, um, and then other things that we have uh, which are kind of related to product integration, like uh, integrating NEC into our in social media um, payments tools. So basically, you'd allow uh, fearless transfers of, of NEC on Telegram, WhatsApp, uh, and Slack, which um, would basically make you guys in tandem with what we're doing. So we take our partnerships really seriously, and, and if uh, we were to get listed, we'd ensure that uh, if SNX trust us was uh, a part of our ecosystem, which it would be if we were to get listed, that uh, such a strong partner would have the same benefits as our token across all our, all our products. So essentially, we try and make NEC available as a way to purchase ICO SDOs, as a way to purchase anything online, uh, and as a, a platform currency across the B2B side as well. So um, Nice. Yeah, lots of, it, lots of things to get excited about there, I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so the Premier League thing, we're actually pretty, that, that actually was a very recent um, development. Like we had a, a marketing advisor or a market maker who came on board, actually, which is uh, another benefit I didn't mention. We, we haven't done that before, but we would, uh, if we were to get listed, uh, a guy called John uh, Fenton from Key Rock, he would be, our, he's our market maker. Uh, we haven't, we don't engage one right now, but uh, he is contractually, contractually engaged to start once we, uh, if we were lucky enough to get listed on SNX. And uh, he also got us the, the Premier League marketing relationship, uh, which again, we haven't pulled the trigger on, but we would if we were listed. Um, and then the final final product I didn't really mention, which isn't ours, that's his, and, and he'd offer if uh, we were to get listed as uh, a custody solution for uh, for NEC, if, if it was helpful or beneficial to uh, SNX, called the Carbon cool. Custody. Mm -hmm. Cool, nice. That's it, yeah. Yeah, lots of uh, interesting stuff there. Appreciate you taking the time, Matthew, to stop by and share that with us. Of course, of course. It's great. Thanks so much for having me, Ben. Appreciate it. Cool, definitely. And uh, I'll add all um, relevant links to what we've discussed in the description so our viewers can check it out easily. And uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks, Ben. Take care. Cheers, you too.